Hi everyone. A while back someone mentioned that using materials to animate objects would enhance performance. Now our question was why, by how much, and is it even worth it? So to start off, we had a fly model uh, that we created. Uh, we rigged it, so as we can see here we have the three joints. Each joint was uh, bound one for the core body, one for each wings. Uh, we gave it an animation over a few frames as we can see right here where the wings are rotating and we also gave it the material for the eyes its own material for the body and its own material for each wing for the material since the fly had materials for each of its body parts of importance it was designed using the world position offset node rotate about axis as such the x-axis was selected for the axis of rotation here in the red, so it's rotating around that axis. A sine function that was clamped around a specific amount of angles resulted in it spinning back and forth as we can see here. So we have time input, we have a frequency modifier, an amplitude modifier, and a sine function. Using this, we tweaked it a little bit into a material instance, and this gives us this sort of rate of back and forth. We added the object's pivot point, which just so happened to be the wing's uh, center point. And finally, this rotation was made using the absolute world position. All this combined produced this effect, which can be seen in this fly here, where it's rotating about the axis, which is located on top of the fly. Depending on your mesh and materials, you may have to tweak this a bit to get the desired results. We tested skeletal animations and material animations over both small scales and large scales. At small scales, we had about 20 actors on screen at any one time, or 20 objects, should I say. And whereas for large scales, we had over 216, about 10 times more. We tested anim instances, actors with animation blueprints, static meshes, and actors that can produce both stacks of either more actors, children in this case, or HISMs. We first tested the typical FPS game, draw, and GPU. And here are the results. We noticed that as expected, the static mesh and materials were the most performant at large scales and small scales. However, having 20 objects on screen did not seem to impact the performance too severely. When we went from 20 to 216, the performance tanked considerably for everything else except for static meshes and to some extent HISMs. Uh, this is mainly because of the uh, built-in instancing that Unreal has. When we looked at the other stats, when we compared the 20 to 216, we saw that for anim instances, or basically anything that used animations, the draw thread and the GPU were through the roof, and basically they were bottlenecked. So that was all well and all, but we also wanted to know why. What in the animation costs so much performance? For this, we use the Unreal Profiler tool. You can summon it and dismiss it using the stat start file and stat stop file, and a profile will be constructed in between those two times, as we can see in the lower corner here. In order to view it, go to Windows, Developer Tools, Session Frontend. This was the original name. Once you open it, you have access to the Profiler tool on which you can load uh, the data that you've basically just created. And then you can take a closer look at what happened. In it, you will find basically a frame by frame analysis of what's happening and what tasks were being used at the time. Here are the results. Surprisingly, yet unsurprisingly, animations required constant draw threads and GPU power. The, these were mainly based around the geometry deformation and calculation of the movement itself from the mesh and then, of course, rendering it. This is due to the fact that animations are physical movements, not just visual ones. We can see from the frame sync time also that the calculation is relatively easy for the CPU. However, it waits for a lot of time for the render thread and GPU to do their jobs, so it's bottlenecked. The material, on the other hand, would bypass the CPU and draw thread and go straight to the GPU. However, that means that no calculations are made. That is to say, when you use the material to animate, you do so only visually. Calculations of shadows did not impact performance considerably at all. 
If you'd like to check it for yourself, the files and the GitHub link are posted in the description. Now this topic is quite interesting because a lot of times on asset stores, people will sell you rigged models, such as birds or even rats. However, you are limited in terms of how many animated actors or objects you can have on screen at any one time. So remember, in our tests, we basically used very, very minimal skeletal animations and features, whereas more complex animations out there exist. So this is a good consideration to keep in mind the next time you check out an asset. Thank you very much. Please let us know in the comments if you like this video and if you'd like to see more in the future. Do these performance tests do anything for you at all? Tell us. Like and subscribe for more notifications and to know when we publish more videos. And finally, consider supporting us on Patreon where you can have a say in what we do, have early access to some alpha builds of games that we're working on, and even have one-on-ones with us. See you next time.